Acetone is just one of those molecules you gotta know the formula for. Uh, clearly I didn't know it the first two times and had to look it up, but it's CH32Cl. And we're looking for the Lewis structure of this. Now when I see a CH3, I know they come at the ends of a molecule. Because a carbon can only have four bonds, and three of them are taken up with hydrogens. Which means the carbon only has one extra bond, and that's the bond that holds it to the chain of the rest of the molecule. So the CH3s have to be at the ends. This C likely is in the center. It has the lowest electronegativity, uh, maybe except for hydrogen, but it can also make four bonds, and it needs to be bonded to this oxygen here. We end up with a carbon in the center, a carbon on either side, and remember these are CH3s. And we need an oxygen. Now oxygen needs two bonds, and lucky for us, this carbon needs two bonds as well, because carbon wants four total. Now, in terms of the number of electrons we need here, because it is a Lewis structure after all, each carbon brings four electrons with it, and each hydrogen brings three. So four for the carbon and one, huh, sorry, each hydrogen brings one, which makes three total. And I have two of those little hanger CH3s, plus another four for this carbon, plus another six for this oxygen, which makes a total of 14, 24 electrons. In terms of the bonds holding this molecule together, I already have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 electrons. Mm -hmm. And the only atom here that doesn't satisfy the octet rule is the oxygen. I can add my four electrons there. It now satisfies the octet rule. And I have the Lewis structure for acetone. Now there's no resonance here because I can't get uh, I can't get electrons moving around and still have all these atoms satisfy the octet rule. So this is the Lewis structure of acetone. This is the way it always is. This is the way it's always going to be. The end. Hey, thanks for watching. Take it easy.